In this video, I will show you how to create a Google document and format it in MLA, Modern Language Association format. I'm in my Google Drive. I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to go to Google Docs. You can also just go straight to Google Docs. And as this loads, just a little bit about MLA format. It's one of several other formats. Different disciplines have different formats um, typically that are used for humanities, English specifically. We use MLA. You might be familiar with APA or Chicago Turabian. These are ways to organize your writing. And as we get into further lessons in the semester, I will show you how MLA format is important in terms of documenting your sources. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit so it's easier to see. For MLA format, you need a readable font. If you click here on the font category, we by default are in Arial. If you want to change the font, I would only change it to Times New Roman or Calibri. These three are acceptable for MLA format. Please don't use anything below that line. These three are acceptable because they're readable. And by default, the size is 11. You may leave it at 11 or increase it to 12, but please don't make it any smaller than 11 or any larger than 12. To get started with MLA format, we want to add our last name and page number. So as a header, to do that, we're going to go to Insert, and we're going to choose Page Numbers, and then we're going to go oops, to this option that is to the top right, where the number, the page number, is at the top right corner of the page. And we click on it. We don't see anything. We're wondering what happened. So we need to go back over here, click on page numbers again. Oop, keep doing that just to show you more options. And that's why you didn't see anything because by default, the first page is at zero. We want to change the zero to one. Hit apply. And now we have number one. We're going to move the cursor to the left of the page number and type in our last name with a space. And then click underneath the header to get out of the header. So that's set up and regardless of the amount of pages your document ends up being, each page will have the correct page number hereafter. The next thing we want to do is go to this icon with the arrow and the three lines to the right of the arrow and that's line spacing. Click that. By default we're at 1.15. We want to change that to double, so now we're at double space, and the rest of your document will be in double space. So you want to keep that in mind when you hit enter. You don't need to do enter twice because then you'll have four spaces. For MLA format, what you want to do next is type your name, your professor's name, the class title, so for example English 100, and then the date. I'm going to hit enter once, and I'm going to go to this icon for aligning. It's a center icon, and that will center space. So this is where you add your title. For MLA format, you do not need to Make your title larger or bold or in italics, just regular font, the font that you've set up to be your default font throughout your paper. I'm going to hit enter one time, go back to the left align icon, and this is where you begin typing your paper. So you want to hit tab or your five spaces if it's not set up to indent the beginning of your paragraph. And start. I 
<laughs> typing your paper. The next line is going to start here. Right? So after that, type your paper. And then I wanted to show you something quickly. In upcoming lessons, I have more information about how to include your source information. In MLA, we use parenthetical citations, which just means you put information for sources inside parentheses. I will show you how to do that, like I said, in a separate lesson. But for now, just in case anybody uses any sources in this first essay, which is not required, but if you do, use somebody else's ideas or you use a quote or a paraphrase, you'd have to create a works cited page, which you will create for your second essay. And I will give you a more in-depth lesson about creating a works cited page in upcoming lessons. But for works cited, and I'm actually going to edit this because I just have one source to use as an example. So it's one work. And notice that this is centered as well. I'm going to go back to the left margin. And I have a source from the library I pulled up. I'm just going to click on this source. And hopefully it won't take too long to open. Most of the online databases from the library include a citation tool, which is really helpful. So I'm going to click Cite and scroll down to MLA. You can see these are some of the different formats used. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Go back to our document and paste it in. You can see it looks a little funky for your MLA format. You don't want any of this highlighting or anything like that. So I'm going to highlight it and click on the highlighter for color and click no color. Now the highlighting is gone. So make sure the font, yep, the font size is smaller. So we're going to change that to 12. We want everything to be the same size. Now with MLA format, when you have entries, the first line is always at the one inch left margin. Subsequent lines for an entry have to have a hanging indent. So that means we're going to move our subsequent lines over to the right. To do this in MLA format, we are going to go to Format, Align an Indent, and then we want Indentation Options. We're going to go to Special Indent which is set at none by default, go to hanging and apply. And now we have a hanging indent. And I forgot to mention as I got started in this video that your margins are where they should be by default. So your last name and page number is at the one, in, uh, one half inch margin by default when you go into page number. Your name begins at the one inch margin on the top and the left. This is all already set up by default. So you don't want to change any of the margins. They're where they should be. And that concludes this video. If you have any information about what I covered in the video, please let me know. Thank you.